Hello. All right, we are live and so today I thought I'd go over reading peyote bead charts. Oops, and I'm just gonna wait for people to get on and then get started. Hi Norma. Norma, you're always the first one on now. It's like you got your you got the whole timing thing down. Hello, Retta. Okay, so um, if you saw my post in the group, I gave you guys a copy of the bee chart that I have. It's a peyote bee chart. Hi, Cheryl. So I folded it down so we can see it on the camera better. But it's for a ring. It's um, so here's what the I did the pattern in black and gold here, and so here's what it looks like. And um, the colors I used here are just black and blue. Hi, Debbie. Yep, I've had a good day. How was your day, Debbie? So this can be challenging for some people if you're not, um, if especially if you're first starting out these bead charts and so I've got the pattern so basically what you're gonna get in the file to one page PDF file so over here on the left is just the pattern and the colors then hi Kathy and then in the center is what they call the bead chart so it has the beads and it's labeled by letters and so the letter A means color A and B is color B and then over here in the third column is the word chart so some people learn in different ways, and so some people just want the pattern over here. Some people want the bead chart or they want the word chart. I've included all three. And so the first one here is pretty self-explanatory. You just, you know, follow the colors. The second one too, same thing. You're just following the colors, but what's nice is that the colors are written out. Now this bead chart, I kept it to only two colors, but when you have something fairly complicated, hey Cheryl, hi Mary, well welcome, thanks for watching me on YouTube, welcome to my Facebook Live. Uh, a lot of people, um, so as I was saying, uh, when you have more than two colors, it, this, a lot of people find that having a B chart like this is very helpful. Then you know which color to pick up. A, B, C, D. I mean, some of these peyote patterns can be really, really complicated. Oh, I'm so glad, Kathy. Yeah, and hi, Kim. So, and I sometimes find that this actually is nice to have too. Only thing that happens to me is I lose track of what row I've done. So I have to go back and count unless I'm marking off. Um, so that's why you see the markings on here that I did because I was start when I first started I was marking them off, and then I realized that I probably shouldn't do that because this was my only printed copy. <laughs> so, but here's how we're gonna do this. So typically you want to go when you start this you want to start on the right side, and so in peyote, uh, so this is row, so rows are obviously from horizontal. So row one is actually this row here where the beads are sitting out. And then row two are the next set of beads, but they're one set lower. Hey, Janica. And then row three would be over here. It's the second black bead below this first one here. So this A over here, then that's row three right here. So if I were to follow this chart and pick up the beads, I'm just going to shift this let's see I'm gonna shift it down so that way it's still on camera but you guys can see me picking up the beads too all right so and if you look at the word um, the word chart you'll be able to follow me with the same thing so the first one they're telling you to pick up is 1b so that's 1b over here same thing so the first one you pick up is 1b and it's actually from row two, if you notice that it's lower. The next one, hey Aretta. The next one you pick up is two A's. So two A's are over here. So those are the two you wanna pick up. So I got my two A's and I'm just bringing these down on my thread. So I'm not doing anything over here. There we go. And then it's six B's is what the next is telling you. So that's one, two, three, four, 
five and six over here. So hopefully you guys can see that over the comments. So that's gonna be six of my blue beads. And that's six. And then the last one in our row, so this, this row is 10 beads wide, is 1A, 1A, which is our black. And so there it is. So that's the pattern you wanna pick up when you start. So you pick up, you're actually picked up two rows of beads. Now I'm gonna turn this up. And so row three is over here. So let's see. Shift this up a little bit. So row three is over here. Row three, the first bead you want to pick up is a black. And it's the same thing over here. So this says row three, R meaning go right. And you're picking up one black, three of our blue beads, that's color B, and then another black bead over here. And the same thing over here. So I'm going to pick up my black. And I'm going to skip the first one and I'm going to go into the blue because that's how you do peyote. So by the way, this is even count. I figure let's make it a little less complicated. And for, I don't know if you guys noticed my post, I did put a copy of this if you want this um, peyote ring. And you can actually turn it into a bracelet too if you want. You just got to keep going with the pattern. It's a repeating pattern. It's in the group and you can download the PDF file. Okay, so I got the first one, that's my black. The next one over is blue. So over here, if you go across, those are our three blues. So we're gonna do three blues now. Oh, I'm glad you found it. Okay, so I'm gonna skip this blue and I'm gonna go up into this next one. And then I got two more to add because it says three blues, so I'm going to keep going. And that one needs to pop down a little bit. And I went, see I went into one bead, I went into the wrong bead, I skipped a bead, the wrong bead. So when you're first starting, that can happen. So I just went. All right, that's not cooperating. There we go. All right, so I've added two now. And I got one more blue. And the last bead. Yeah, the pattern's not left or right. Um, I happen to be holding this in my, you know, doing the needlework with my left hand, but you're still gonna be able, it's exactly the same thing. The pattern was actually written for a righty. It's actually set for a right-handed right, right person. Nope. So typically they tell you to start, I mean, all of these tell you to start this way. I'm just showing you how to do it if you're left-handed and how to go about following it. So this is my, this is basically, or sorry, flip it. This is the pattern. So you're just building it. You're building it from top to bottom. Um, and then you're just going to go left and right. And again, it's just a matter of how you hold your beads. So I happen to be just holding it this way. So if you're a right-handed, I think most righties would probably hold it like this. And you can still work it exactly the same way I did it. So let me know. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Good. I see the okay. So I'm just going to... So the last bead I need to hold is, or pick up is the black bead here. All right, so here's the pattern. And so 
and this is how it's going to be set. So it doesn't change anything, it's just a matter of how you go about reading it. So it doesn't matter whether you're left-handed or right-handed. You can work this pattern in pretty much the same way. So I'm just going to, and what I typically do is just, I just flip everything. So I work from the bottom up as I'm adding the rows. So row four, um, it says to go left. So row four would be starting here. So that's row four, A. So if you follow this, it's one A, one A, and then again, three Bs. So it's one, two, three of our color B, and then one A. So then you end there. And so I'm down here at the bottom, coming out of that last blue bead at the end, and pick up my black. So once you get that third row set in, you're pretty, I mean, it's going to get a lot easier because the beads are now sitting and with Delicas that I'm using, it's, it's a lot more comfortable to work with too because they're just going to, they just stay put. I mean, this is a nice firm piece already. So, and I'm using Wildfire Thread, which is also gives you a nice, more firm piece. Oh, thank you, Angelica. The same to you. All right, so if you followed what I just did, I added one black, one, two, three of my color B, which is the blue. And now I'm gonna add my last color, or color A in my last bead in this row. And then this is the built out of the pattern, so. And then, again, I just, like I said, I work up, so I'm just going to flip it this way. And so row five now is going to be two A's and three B's. So row five is one, two A's, and let me see if I can shift that up a little more so you guys can see. One, two A's, and then one, two, three B's. There's my first A, color A, and then second, color A bead. And then I finish off with three color beads. And there you go, there's the pattern. You can start seeing that zigzag pattern. So here's the, the pattern that I did in gold. And then here's how the pattern would look. So see, it's coming out the same way. So this just shows you the whole pattern. I just happened to do it in, I wanted a, a black and gold ring. So that's why I did it in these colors because this is for me. Um, and I'm going to show you one more row, and then um, I'll show you how to zip up a, a, row, um, a peyote ring like this to do, or even if you do like a toggle clasp, knowing how to zip it up is good. Oh, you are welcome, Moretta. All right, so row six. Row six on the B chart is here, so it starts with the blue, blue blue and then it'll be two blacks it's the same thing row six three blues what i just showed you and then two of color a which is my two blacks so let me ask you a question what's the um so the first stitch i actually learned was peyote stitch what's the first stitch that you guys learned So my first one is in. Oh, I'm glad that it's making sense. And 
Loom beading. You know, I have never tried loom beading. That's um, one thing that I've been wanting to try to do. Oh, it took me, Debbie, a right angle weave was one of the harder ones for me because all the instructions were right-handed. <laughs> so I had such a hard time figuring that one out, especially doing multiple rows. Oh yeah, netting. Oh wow, another right angle weaver. Wow. Yeah, peyote and bee chars was actually one of my first ones. Anyway, so that's how you do that. And um, if you guys didn't hear me or came in a little bit later, I a copy of this is in the group. So it's just JRP Designs group and you can just download it. It's a PDF file and you're welcome to it. It's a ring. It's about the length in there. Daisy chain. Oh, now that's unusual. So the length I have in the pattern is uh, two and three quarter inches. So you can, and it's a repeating pattern. So you just start back at the top. If you want to make it longer, you could turn this into a really pretty bracelet too. There is sound. Um, hmm. I think we'll have to write a comment. You guys can all hear me, right? There is sound. Okay. Yeah, you guys are uh, welcome, no problem. So let me show you, I'm gonna move this chart out of the way. Yeah, I, you know, I go back and forth between the, the chart and the, um, the word, or the B chart and the words, uh, word chart there. It uh, can, so it depends. Okay, great, thank you guys. All right, so if you were to make this into a ring, if you go ahead and build out the pattern. So Carol, you might want to restart it. If she can't hear, um, so I'm gonna tell her to restart the um, video. So when you make this into a peyote ring, one of the things you wanna do, or even if you're making a peyote toggle, so I'll show you guys how to make a clasp in a future video. Um, using peyote. But one of the things you want to do is make sure that this all fits together. So you see how this black bead is sticking out where there's actually room for a bead over here. And so this will fit into place. It's like a little puzzle piece, puzzle piece fitting together. And so my thread is coming out of this black bead down here. I'm going to move it closer. And to zip it up, then you go into the other side. So this will go around. And I'm going to leave this loose for now, just so you guys can see the thread path. Then you would go across to this one that's sticking out. So basically you're going back and forth between the beads that are sticking out. So the next bead that's sticking out is this black one on this side. And then I would go across to the yellow bead. Oh, absolute. Oh, it's, are you talking about this one? Or the, oh, the one from last night, Beverly? And so I'm coming out of this. I'm going to go across to the next gold. All right, hand eye coordination. Come on, there we go. And then across. You'll get there, go, um, Beverly, you'll get there. It just takes practice. And then across. So basically, you know, think of this as a zipper and you're sewing the pieces together. So...
There's this one. My black one over here. I have made a 3D beaded star. You actually are doing, um, it's, it's actually pretty easy to do once you kind of get the, the trick behind it, Kelly. And so the last step here is, so I want to make sure you guys can, is to go through this bead over here. They're set, they're going to be side by side and that kind of will close everything up. So you would just tighten everything. So I'm not going to be able to tighten it completely, but so it's loose, but it just tightens and it'll all come into place. <laughs> all right, I guess I'll, I'll be doing a tutorial on 3D beaded stars. Have you guys seen the the um, YouTube channel Seed Be Seed Bead Bliss? She's got a she's got one that she does with six odd beads, which is really nice. Um, she made an ornament. Her name is I think the lady's name is Leslie. So that's all you would do, and then I would just weave the thread away. So once you are finished. You would just want to go into some of these beads. I usually go at a diagonal and just weave the thread down. So I'm coming out of this gold over here. So I would go down and my thread's a little short, but I would go down to the black, which is diagonal from this gold that I'm coming out of. And then you can go across and go up. Oh, you're very welcome, Kathy. This is, like I said, I really seem to enjoy doing this. It's fun. Um, these beads are called Delica beads, Aretta May. And you can go down, you can go across again and then just head down in a zigzag pattern and that's pretty much how you weave it away. So um, I'm not going to continue because I got to tighten this up a little bit before I can weave it away completely. But that's it. And then if this was fully tight, nope, wrong finger. There's my ring. Oh, you're welcome, Debbie. Oh, Rhonda, you can catch it on the replay. As soon as the live's done, you'll be able to watch it again from the beginning. And there it is. All right. Oh, I'm glad you like it. So let me show you the beads around May. So I got some at Art Beads, and they're Mayuki. And this one's um, the gold one that I was using is lined marigold. And then there's Delicas. Uh, so Art Beads definitely carries them. A lot of the Oh, you're, oh, I'm glad you like the ring, Terry. Yeah, the pattern is in the group. So if you want to go into the JRP Designs group, there's a PDF that you can download if you want the pattern. So here's the blue ones. Oh, yeah, green and, green and red would look nice. I did one in pink um, here, too. So this was kind of just a fun, fun piece that I did. And here's the black beads. They're the opaque black delica. So I got all of these. You get a little bag of eight grams of beads. This can go a, a long way. This little bit of eight grams. And so the beads are very uniform in shape. Yes, these are all um, size seven delica beads. So if you take a look at the beads, they're, they're cylindrical beads. Oh, you're welcome, Mary. I'm so glad that you're able to follow them. Yeah, I love art beads too. So here they are. They're very uniform in shape. And so that's why the beaded pieces sit so completely. You can see how they it's like the little bricks sitting together. And so yeah, if you've never tried peyote, this is a great stitch to learn. I love doing this. Um, doing this particular stitch. It's nice to do just sitting in front of the TV if you've got like a simple pattern that you can, that's just repeating or you don't need to worry about bead charts. Um, but yep, yeah. so that's it. 
And I hope that explains the Delica beads to you. They come in size eights too. Um, and these are size 11 aught. So, um, what, are you talking about a peyote pattern, Kathy? Oh yeah, you should definitely do some, Aretta. Definitely, good idea. Hmm. So, I usually start with, I would usually, I usually start with 20 grams. Yes, yeah, seed beads will work, Beverly. You want to make sure they're uniform. So, Kathy, I would start with 20 grams of beads is usually what I start. In this case, you this is less than, I probably didn't even use a full gram in this particular pattern. Um, a lot of, I'm surprised the patterns don't give you the amount of beads you need, but I always start with a larger amount of seed beads. That's usually the way I go. I just have more than I need. Because you can never have too many beads, right? <laughs> Um, anyone help have, have any other questions? Yes, exactly. To be safe, I always um, have a larger amount of beads. So, and I uh, a lot of times you contact the designer; they'll tell you um, how many beads to to get. So, because they usually, like the program, I use a program called Bead Tool when I do these peyote designs. And um, it's an inexpensive, I'm back tomorrow, 9 p.m. Central. It's an ines, inexpensive program. It's about $50 software program, but it'll, it gives you a bead count. It tells you how many beads the pattern requires by color. Yes, I'll be back live. Ah, okay, so adding threads a little trickier. Um, I'm gonna have to show you that on a different video, Kelly. Um, it's it's almost the same way. You're just, you weave, you start at some point towards the end, close to the end of where you're, you've run out, and then you weave it through first and then make your way to where you need to be in the pattern, um, in this or where you need to be in terms of position. But I can show how to add thread on peyote in a, in a different video. All right, guys. Well, um, any more questions or? There's like this 30 second delay, so I'm just waiting. <laughs> You welcome, Kathy. And all right, well then I will say good night if there are no other questions. And if you do have questions, go ahead and just post them in the comments and I'll just reply to the comments. You're welcome. Have a good night, everyone. See you tomorrow, 9 p.m. Central.